Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is that you're joining me for this video. Thank you once again for clicking on the Penboy Roy Fountain Pen Review Channel. The subject of today's video is going to be the Sailor Pro Gear Slim Transparent Green Fountain Pen. Before I get into the neutral zone, the good, the bad, the ugly, and high noon on this pen, I'd like to go over some background information, starting with the brand. But before I even do that, let me first say a big thanks and a shout out to Tom Odo Sal, whose last name I can't really pronounce, and Don Johnson at Goldspot Pens for providing me with this pen free of charge. It is the first free pen that I've got for review purposes on my channel, so it has a lot of sentimental value to me. Now let me get on to the background information, starting with the date 1911. Some Japanese dude named Kayu Goro Sakata met a British sailor who introduced him to his very first fountain pen. This was so mind-boggling and awesome to him that he was immediately infected by the fountain pen virus and started making his own nibs with an obsessive passion. He opened up a plant and the plant was located in Goblin's Beak. That's in Hiroshima, but uh, above Hiroshima. That way, in 1945, when Hiroshima got nuked and blown to smithereens, Goblin's Peak was pretty much unaffected. In the 1950s, there was almost a thousand plus employees. In the 1970s, the Sailor Company decided to replace many of the employees with robots and cyborgs. Today, there are no longer thousands of employees working for Sailor. However, there are a couple hundred. And those couple hundred monitor the robots and cyborgs to make sure that they're not breaking down, falling apart, or gaining enough intelligence to be able to take over the human race. Which is a good thing, because Skynet could happen. Who knows? The key nibmeister is a Japanese dude named Yukio Nagahara. Now just an interesting fact about the name Nagahara. Nagahara is a name associated with quality instruments, not just in writing, but as well as musical instruments. I don't know if there's a relation, but there is also a dude whose name is Kanichi Nagahara, and he makes badass handmade flutes out of precious metals such as silver, gold, platinum, and he calls them Nagahara flutes. You should check them out if you're into flutes. If not, who cares? Then don't. But just know that. I think it's cool. Now this series of fountain pens in the Pro Gear line has several different iterations. Some are larger, with 21 karat gold nibs. Some have piston fillers, also with 21 karat gold nibs, both of which have higher price points, obviously. This one here is going to be the Sailor Pro Gear Slim, released in about 2010, or at least the name was changed from Sapporo to Pro Gear in 2010. I guess the situation was Sapporo Beer Company was making a lot more money off of free advertising, and the guys at Sailor were like, hold on a second. We're not getting free kegs of beer, so we're going to just change the name until they start sending us free beers. Because that's exactly what I would do, even though I don't drink alcohol, but it makes it very convenient when you have UFC parties. That's all I have for the background information. Moving on to the neutral zone. Those elements about the pen that are neither good or bad, or can be good or bad, depending on you. Okay, I'm going to start with the nib. It's a proprietary 14 karat gold nib coated in rhodium. It has the typical Sailor branding and scroll work. The feed is the usual proprietary feed that you see in a lot of the Sailor pens, as well as Tachia pens. The nib and feed are part of a fixed nib unit, so be advised, this nib unit is not designed to be unscrewed or screwed. That doesn't mean you can't, and if you can, just be advised you are avoiding your own warranty. However, you can pull the nib and feed out using a rubber grip. The grip is a slightly tapered grip, also transparent. It has a metal ring separating it from the body, and that metal ring is part of the grip thread assembly. The grip thread assembly is a metal grip thread assembly fixed with a clear adhesive, and this screws in to the resin threads of the body. The threads on the outside are soft and subtle as well. They are not distracting in any way, shape, or form, so if you're a high gripper and you encounter them, it's not going to bother you. If you're a low gripper and you don't encounter them, then they're definitely not going to bother you. Following the threads is a small step. It's very subtle and it's almost not noticeable. The rest of the body is tapered to a ring. The ring separates the end cap. The end cap is fixed to the body using also a clear adhesive. The cap has a finial and a black dial within the finial with an anchor emblem. Beneath that, a washer that's part of the clip assembly. The clip is tension fixed and is a single piece fixed to the finial using a bolt screw mechanism assembly. After that, there's a clear plastic sleeve on the inside and this prevents drying out of the nib as well as gives some snug resistance when capping and uncapping the pen. The body of the cap has flat striations running through it. The center band is a rhodium plated metal center band that reads Sailor and founded 1911 in a raised step design. This center band is also secured using a clear adhesive. The cap screws and unscrews in two full rotations. The pen came inside of this outer white sleeve. Inside the white sleeve is your standard Sailor clamshell box. Inside is the bedding. The pen rests inside the bedding. Underneath the bedding is a compartment that holds two Sailor proprietary cartridges as well as the ink converter that's included and your paperwork. The whole design of this pen is a classic flat top design pen. In addition, it is made of injection molding. That's all I have for the neutral zone. Moving on to the good. Those elements about the pen that are good. Alrighty then. 
As usual, I'm going to start with our nib. Now let me tell you about this nib. Straight out of the box, this sucker wrote like a freaking savage. I gotta say, it's my belief that this nib was tuned and adjusted by Japan's most anal retentive, obsessive compulsive nibmeister that Sailor has to offer, because this thing was perfect right out of the box. The ink flow is generous, it's not even close to being dry, it also is such a fantastic writer. It's so pleasurable to write with in that it has a certain unique feedback that I think is distinct to Sailor. Yet, at the same time, it's super smooth. Now, when I say feedback, I'm not talking Platinum 3776 feedback. Not even close. It's just different. I can't even put it to words. Another aspect that I love about these nibs, and the way this pen writes, is the fact that it doesn't have any problems. No baby's bottom, no hard starts, no issues whatsoever. You leave it for a couple of days, and then write with it later, it starts up. It's completely reliable. Lastly, I want to talk about the body. Although I'm not particular or fond of injection molded resins, this pen feels very solid, very sturdy, and very durable. It's not your Jinhao 992. It's a compact size, smaller pen that I think posted is just perfect for pretty much the average size hand. If you're Steve Baby Ochic, maybe this is too small, but if you're just a normal size 5'11 dude like me, then this is just perfect. If you're a smaller person, it's perfect. That's all I have for the good. Moving on to the bad. Let's talk coin. Now the MSRP of this pen is $195. At Gold Spot Pens you can pick it up at a discount for $155.95 and that seems to be the average price that retailers are offering this pen throughout the United States. $160 is not a bad price point. If there's any caveat that I have to talk about with the bad is, I do find that Itoya, the distributor of the Sailor brand pens, they have an iron gall grip on the balls of the sales of their distributed products. As much as they have a grip on the balls of sales, I do find these pens at lower price points through Amazon and eBay, which kind of screws over all of the retailers who are doing things legitimately, paying their dues and making money following all the rules. So if they're going to squeeze the balls of retailers online, then they need to get the whip cracking on these retailers who are selling outside of the guidelines that all the retailers are selling them for. That's all I have for the bad. Moving on to the ugly. Those elements about the pen that should not be, but are. Now when it comes to the ugly, this pen is near perfect. There's not a lot of ugly to talk about. There's only two elements that I found, and they are super minor at worst. But I'm going to tell you about them since I found them. One, the clip itself, although very well secured, is somewhat wiggly, uncapped. And then after you cap the pen, it wiggles just a little bit less. Now I don't know if this is a quality control issue because the bolt is not screwed tight enough. I didn't take it apart to try finding out for myself. Second thing, the adhesive used to secure the parts that were epoxied in, although clear and almost non-visible, is still slightly visible. Not that big of a deal. But like I said, since I found them, I'm just pointing them out. Enough of the ugly. It's high noon. Decision making time. Should you or should you not pull the trigger on the Sailor Pro Gear Slim Transparent Green Fountain Pen? Whether you get the green one, the blue one, or the other colors, the decision on buying this pen rests with weighing it against other pens within the same price point, such as the Platinum 3776 or the Tachiya Spectrum. It's a real Sophie's choice, but when it comes to the benefits and the positives, it's such a tough call. It's like watching George St. Pierre fight a clone of George St. Pierre. It's like comparing Mike Tyson to Muhammad Ali in their prime. It's like watching the Williams sisters play tennis. I would definitely say pull the trigger on the Sailor Pro Gear. That was my review of the Sailor Pro Gear Slim. I hope you found it helpful. And don't forget about the Penboy Roy Fountain Pen Review Channel discount code. The way it works is you email me, I'll email you back a code, and then you call up Gold Spot Pens with that code. You dial 207 pound, and you speak to a nice lady named Dawn Johnson, and she'll coordinate this discount for you. This discount code is available only to Penboy Roy Fountain Pen Review Channel subscribers. Thank you to the people at Gold Spot Pens, specifically Tom Odo, Sal, whose last name I can't pronounce, and Don Johnson for the support since the beginning of my channel. And thank you guys for sticking with me and watching. Love you guys. Be well. Be safe.